Hey everybody, this is Rich and this is Beekeeping with Rich. Uh, it's late December down here in South Florida. The uh, temperature is uh, 79 degrees at the moment. Humidity is low by our standards, about roughly uh, 50%. The bees are in the bee yard happily fanning away and uh, making honey out of some of the nectar they've been collecting. Uh, wonderful smell when you're out there as any beekeeper knows. A few minutes ago, we did a video on my hive setup. Take a look at that one. Um, and it occurred to me that I really didn't say anything about the hive stands that the hives go on. And you know, they've got a couple of features of their own. Uh, the design was prompted by somebody else on the internet many years ago. I don't remember who, I can't give proper credit, but this is my take on them. Uh, my hive stands are made out of one by or sorry, two by three pressure treated wood with squared up corners centered on a three or a five sixteenths hole in each corner with a five inch by uh, five sixteenths uh, eye bolt screwed into them. This is for adjustment purposes. It's easy enough to make an adjustment like this. The uh, stands sit on top of cinder blocks, which are leveled and stabilized ahead of time. And then you put these on it and you check them with level again. You make whatever adjustments you want to make to make sure they're perfectly level and you go from there. Uh, we used to use stack two cinder blocks high. After a while, they tend to settle a bit too much and you start losing being level and those uh, two level high of cinder blocks meant that bufo toads would crawl up into the uh, cavities in them and snack on the bees way too much you'll see if you're using an eight frame hive this is an eight frame uh, screen bottom board if your block is here your landing board hangs that well over does a great job of keeping the bufos away and they're a problem down here and uh, even less for the lizards although I don't think this is a real deterrent to any great extent on the lizards but they usually find enough on the ground as the undertaker bees drag out the bees to drop and they drop them and they just run over and scarf them up uh, they're exactly the same whether you're making them for a five frame nuke and if you're going to do this usually of course you're going to have your nuke's too high because <laughs> you're building something up. But they're the same whether you're doing a five frame nuke, eight frames, you can make them for 10 frames, or as I do for my extra wide hurricane hives, they're just double the width for the hurricane hive. I don't put two eight framers together to do that because that would, too much variability in there you know, you'd be adjusting too many feet. It's easier just to make them out of one by threes. The screws are on the underside where there's, they're going to be away from the weather and the rust. I think I already mentioned that. Pretty darn simple. Uh, I don't know, there's a whole lot more you can say about that aspect of them. So that gets us into, okay, how do you keep the ants out? Well, I don't know the origins of these. I picked these up at a thrift store one day. But online I picked up 25 of these little uh, prep cups, stainless steel prep cups. And as small as they may look, they're the right size for these as well. And the nice part is that these are so small that it kind of keeps everything out of the rain. So I don't use these anymore but they happen to be available to show you what's going on. What do you put in them? Well, a lot of people put oil in them. I don't. I prefer to put diatomaceous earth in them. Uh, very fine powder. You put it in there. If after a while it cakes up, you knock it out, you can put some more in there. But I want to show you something else I like a lot. It's been around since the 1800s, and that is Tanglefoot. You can find it at most garden centers. If not, readily available online. 
It's been around since 1885. It says so right there. It is a heavy grease. Okay. And all you have to do, scoop a bit of it up, slather it underneath here. Now you notice it's on the underside of the uh, thing, of the stand, so it's protected from the sun, it's protected from the weather. The ants try to crawl up, they hit it, and it's called Tanglefoot. It's for keeping ants out of things, so you put that. It's a good first guard or second guard if you're going to put one of these underneath that. Either way, it's a good way to keep ants and other critters out of your hives is the first line of defense. A um, couple other men things to mention would be that when you are putting your cinder blocks down for this system, don't be cheap and use one cinder block turned this way and kind of balancing on the edges with the holes facing this way. Use two and turn them this way and then use two back here again so the holes are going this way. The reason for that being that if you are going to get strong winds, you run a strap through the cinder blocks underneath the stand up over the hive and tighten it down. That puts, all, that puts that much more weight and stability on your hive. If you turn them this way and use a few less, well, another thing is the bufos like to get in there and hang out and you know see what they can do about getting to your bees. If you turn them this way where they can hang out, it doesn't do them any good. There's no bees over here. So that works for that. Um, that's really about all there is to it. Shims. Oh, shims. Thank you. Um, after you've gone to the trouble of leveling your cinder blocks with a level, you put these on and you go to the trouble of leveling them again with the level and cranking them with this so everything is nice and stable and there's no rockiness or anything else to it. You then, in my opinion, it's easier to do it this way, you slide a shim. Now let's use this. We always like to have our, it doesn't matter with the screen board. I don't even know why I'm showing you with a screen board. I should be showing you this with a solid bottom board. With the screen board, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, but you put in a couple of shims back here so that it's slightly tilted forward. Can you just screw these up back here? Yeah, you can. But this is easy. It's fast. It's stable. And it's less of a problem to just stick a couple of shims in there. They're certainly inexpensive enough. But like I said, I don't even know why I'm showing you this using a screen bottom board for the demo. It doesn't matter with a screen bottom board, only if you're using solid bottom boards. So uh, that's about the rest of it. Uh, I do had difficulty finding eye bolts of the size that I wanted at Home Depot or Lowe's, other big box stores. So I went online to order them and it was also far, far, far less expensive to just order a bunch of these online. So I would use that suggestion for you as well because uh, I'm not about trying to make you spend money you don't need to spend. <laughs> but a nice open stand like this that allows you to strap your hive down by going underneath it and holding everything in a unit works even better if you Put your cinder blocks underneath there in such a way that you can run it through the cinder blocks as well. Keep that in mind. And uh, you all have a great new year. See you later. Bye-bye.